All right, let's go. No fancy intros, no nothing. Had a uh, request by a couple of people to show how I use Nansen to find new plays that uh, you know smart money is jumping into. And I'm going to follow through on that promise and get it to you today. Uh, first, I want to just talk about Bitcoin real briefly. Not a whole lot to say about it. You know, as far as the horizontal price action, it's just going sideways. Obviously, this could have been our temporary top. Um, you know, especially based on this presidential chart I'm about to get on, uh, talk about here in a second that I made. So the current areas that it could bounce from are, are where it is currently. And then the, if we look left here, this is all the price action from 2022. I think the early part. Yeah. And here is the point of control where most of the volume took place. And that's right at, you know, 38, five, 39 K. So even if we drop a little bit further, I think we will get a bounce there. But we'll just have to see. I mean, I don't know if we're going to come back up and you know reject once more. If that was to happen and it showed weakness again, then you know we're certainly coming down to at least thirty-five k. I mean, th these are zones that have a lot of liquidity, where people are are ready to buy it up, and it doesn't mean this has to hold. You know, it still could come down here. Stood still could even come down to, you know, 31K or something. Because that is the low point of this range where there's a lot of... See, the problem I have with this move, if it's going to get weak, you know, as long as it stays strong, there was no problem. But once it shows some weakness, then you got to think, well, where's the shoulder here that it could find support? And I guess you could say in here there might be one, but it, it's it's more down here as the major support. Um, you know, usually you want you'd want to find some really strong support, like um, well, here is some obviously, because that was resistance at one time, and then it flipped, and and now it's going to be support at some point when it gets retested. So money flow is clearly coming out. Um, you know, we're not going to catch the top every time when we're selling, but I don't know that now is the time to. I mean, I would be looking for positions more than I would be looking to get out of my positions. And that's just my own personal take on it. Cause you're down 20% from the top. Generally speaking, you get, I don't know, 30 to 40% retrace before the halving, but we have had no rate cuts yet. So I don't know. Um, you know, this, this could be the dip before the halving. I'm not real sure. I just expect some kind of push back up to, retest the breakdown at some point you know maybe it's here at um i haven't really looked at this but it could be here somewhere around where the start of the imbalance is about you know 43k or something but anyway i didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time on it um that's what i'm waiting for is to see this next bounce and see how it reacts uh, you know hopefully because we are way oversold i mean if you look at the rsi i mean well it's under 50 but usually on this first I think I talked about this in one video recently. Usually this first dip below the 50 on the RSI is just a warning. And then you get one more move up at minimum. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, uh, you know, if you have, you know, if you have money that you can put into the market, then you want to be looking for these areas that it could bounce from. And then this is that, this is that, uh, presidential chart I wanted to talk about real quick. This is something I made on my own, um, I just wanted to briefly talk about how to read it. So the, you know, clearly the halvings, the previous halvings are marked out from previous cycles. The uh, presidential election dates, of course, this one's the future date right here, but these are ones that have already happened. And these were the midterms. I mean, I, I put the midterm date on it just to help find the bottom. And initially what I was thinking when I first made this chart, you know, of course I couldn't, I couldn't see any of this when I made it. I think it was uh at late 2022 that I made this chart. And I was thinking, you know, based on this midterm right here, sometime after the midterm, shortly after, you should get that last push down. And it didn't really happen exactly like that. It, it happened more that the date of the midterm was the, or the week of the midterm was the actual bottom. So it kind of worked and it kind of didn't. It was close anyway. And then I've got this breakout, this lower high breakout that's marked on each one of them. And we rejected right off of that. So in my mind, just from a pattern standpoint, 
I'm not saying this is going to happen again because this was a black swan, obviously. But you know, if you think about, okay, it came up and rejected and then it had a little bit of a retrace and it's ready to go again. I mean, we could, we could be more like in here possibly, but what I'm looking at is we're not to the having date yet. So I mean, you could even move it to this one, I guess, something like that. This one was kind of different. It was weird. It, this uh, rejection right here happened right around the having back in uh, 2016. So it was different. But anyway, the, the idea is the same. You get a little rejection either prior to having or at the having, and then you have your push up from there. You know, that that's when the real bull market bull market gets going. And then down here, this is the, uh, what is this thing called? Krypton fear and greed index. Not really that important, but it gives you a visual aid to say, okay, well, you know, when this comes up, this is real bullish when it's into this zone, but when it crosses back down on this line right here, usually that's bearish. I mean, you can see most of these times when it crossed back down, this wasn't much of a dip, but this one was, that one was, you know, all of these kind of, if you look at it closely, most of them had a pretty good dip after it. So, you know, take that for what it's worth and make your own decision. But personally, you know, I'm, I'm not looking to get out of a lot of my positions right now. I'd rather hold through the full bull market on the positions that I trust, that I, I think are good projects. And, uh, you know, if I have extra capital, I'll add to it. Uh, ETH compared to Bitcoin here, it's kind of hitting a resistance area that I talked about before. It could just go sideways a bit. So in general, you know, some coins could get a little bit, bit of a bounce, but I'm just, like I said, I'm looking for that next sign of weakness. Currently, ETH BTC is over 50 on the weekly. You certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want to see it go under that. Let's see what it looks like on the daily. Yeah, so it's still bullish on the daily. It's over 50. Same thing there. Four hour showing some weakness, yeah. But, you know, we'll just have to see if it gets some kind of bowl, you know, where it, where it curves out here. I mean, because the if you switch over, by the way, I was looking at this, and I usually don't look at the stock market. And a lot of people are saying, well, it's bullish. Yeah, it is for sure. But, you know, you do have to be careful here because this is a resistance area. Now, if it breaks above there, obviously things are just going to go crazy. But there's no clear sign there yet. Some people may be buying this thinking it's going to break out, and that's the wrong way to play it. Uh, you would want to wait for the breakout and the retest. All right, so let's jump into what we were going to talk about here. And I know a lot of you were looking forward to I'll show you how to find new tokens. And in the the example I'm going to use to begin with is movie, that uh, BRC20 token. That's the one that some of you know that I found through this and, and kind of how you found out that I use Nansen. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to go through how I found um, movie first, but let's just, let's go over a few things real quick before I get into that. Uh, stable coins are coming off of the market. Well, not coming off the market, but they're being used. They're being deployed as this dip happens. So there are people buying, uh, there is smart money buying currently doesn't mean they're right to buy here it just means that they're they're seeing value in some alts or or maybe they're buying eth i don't know because here's eth as well the uh people have seen that you know at least smart money has seen that eth has been beaten down for a while and it's one of the more undervalued altcoins as well even though it's a higher cap so you know this line represents as it comes down that's eth being taken off of exchanges See if there's anything else here I want to talk about. I don't think so. So I'm going to just go to my dashboard here and just show you what I usually look at each day. Sometimes I'll look at the sector flows and just see, okay, over the last 24 hours, what, where has most of the money been going? It's been going into data sourcing and Oracle coins. So you might go on to, um, uh, what's it called? Coin market cap and look at the categories and you can bring up this category if you can find it. Um, uh, you know, oracles is easy to search. It's one of the categories on there. I don't know what to look for on data sourcing. Let's just see what currency looks like. There's currency. 
Yeah. People are, well, last seven days, 27 million has been taken out of the market basically by smart money. And, and I guess this calculates smart money. I'm actually not sure. This could be everybody. It may not just be smart money. But over the last 24 hours, also 24 million has been taken out. So people are still, you know, concerned that the price is going down. So they're taking more money out of the market. We'll see. I mean, maybe it'll get a bounce here. Maybe it won't. Nobody knows. We just got to look for these areas that it can bounce from or reject from and, you know, get an idea once we see what price action does in that area. Let's see. Token flow. Okay. So before I get into this, because this would be the how to find new tokens, I'm going to jump over here and show you one other feature that this has. And it's called the signals feed. So currently what I have selected is the smart money token flow. We'll look at that first because I think this is how I found movie. <clears throat> and this is a great way to use it. So you can just fly through here and, you know, scroll and, and try to find a coin that's being acquired. If you're seeing disperse, then that means people are selling it and you don't want to mess with that coin. You want to find one that's being acquired. So here's one right here, root. Um, over the last 24 hours, that's a 27 X increase in the recent average. And I don't know how many days it uses to find that average, but obviously people are buying on this dip for root. And this is a pretty well-known coin. I mean, I, I don't know that I would really look at this one, but um, I think this would also tell us that people are putting USDC. Let's see. They're dispersing USDC. I'm pretty sure that means that people are spending USDC to buy coins. I, I think that's right. Because for, for a stable coin, it means the opposite. You know, if it's being dispersed, then yeah, USDC is being sold, but that means it's being sold into a different altcoin. You know, maybe maybe you're buying XRP USDC, though I don't know why why you would. Uh, but that's just one example. And, and then on the flip side, if you saw root say that it was being dispersed, then that would be a bad thing. You know, people would be selling it, but it's being acquired here. So we'll, we'll just take um, we'll take the next one that we find here that's not an an obvious play. I mean, a lot of people have been playing root, so I don't want to get into that one. Let me just find one reach I haven't heard of. So fully dil diluted valuation is 5.5 million. That's a pretty good one. It seems like a fairly new coin maybe. So uh, eight times or nine times the recent average. I think that's the one I want to use. Okay, let's just use that one. So we're using reach. I can go ahead and click here. Like say if this was before when I was looking at movie, I would have seen that smart money was accumulating, you know, acquiring movie. It would have had the, the word movie here. So now it's reach in this case. And uh, obviously, you know, we're looking at only smart money. So I'm going to click that. And now I'm getting a lot more information. Here's all the transactions that are taking place. Looks like mostly buys uh, more than sells. Let's see if this thing tells us anything. Sometimes this won't give any data, but over the last seven days, it will. In 24 hours, it's hard to find much data. So you're not getting a whole lot of um, a whole lot of money being put into it, but that's fine. I mean, you usually want to find the one that hasn't really moved much anyway. Let's just see what the smart money flow looks like here. So smart money holders has, has stayed relatively the same. Somebody bought a lot recently. Let's see, where do I want to go for that? Well, one thing you can look at here is your top holders. I mean, you could, um, let's see, let's look at the last 24 hours who's been accumulating. That would be one way to look at it. So it looks like this guy right here, or this person here, has bought 34,000 worth over the last 24 hours. So that's pretty significant. In fact, you've got a lot of smart money here. If they have a little uh, nerd looking emoji here, then they're all smart money. And so you look at that and you say, okay, you got quite a few people, even though it's not much money, I understand. But also you have to remember this is a 5.5 million uh, FDV coin. You know, there's only been $5 million worth of money put into this coin overall, you know, through the buys and sells. 
kind of like the market cap of this coin. So it was deployed on December 2023. That's important. I mean, it's good to find these new coins. So this is less than 30 days old, probably. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot of people selling. There's a couple. I mean, one thing you can do is you can jump over here and say, let's look at the highest balance users and just see if they're selling or if they're buying. And I mean, clearly you had a lot of buys, very few sells. So you know, you're feeling pretty good about that anyway. Uh, what else do we want to look at? One thing you can do also from here, one way I use this is to find uh, smart money that seems to know what they're doing. And so if I see somebody like this that has bought a lot, I'm going to click over to their wallet. You got to click it again. <clears throat> and the only way, only way they get labeled as smart money, by the way, is if they have had uh, profitable buys and sells within a certain period of time, like the last 30 days. Let's see what this guy, well, it actually doesn't say on him, but it's clear that he's made some profit lately. So that's fine. Uh, you can look in the last month to see what he's bought and sold, or at least what he's bought. And it is a big account. You know, it's a, it's a large wallet. Just trying to see if there's any other coins that he's bought recently that have been good plays. And it looks like he, he plays a lot of, he plays a lot of meme coins or brand new coins. You know, he's trying to get in before, before everybody else. So really you'd have to do a lot more uh, research into reach. So let's just say this, let's look up reach on the chart. If I can find the right one, let's see, wrapped ether. I wonder if this is it. This might be it, but there's not enough information on this uh, MEXC chart for me. I mean, clearly it, it could be in a range that where this wick is, that it would be a good buying opportunity. But I'd rather look at something with more. I think this is the wrapped ether pair for it. Let me just, I'm going to go over here on my other screen real quick and look up reach. <clears throat> and usually what I do on this is if I'm going to look something up, I type in reach coin or reach token, hit that. And this looks like the right one. So I'll go to coin gecko. Yeah, there it is. Well, is that right point? Yeah, that's the right logo anyway. Okay. So it was deployed approximately late December. We'll just say, yeah, this is the right one. And sometimes I might go to their website, you know, check out their website just to see, is it a real website? You know, this does seem like a, a legit thing. Yeah. Logo matches all that. It looks like you have to connect to it just to be able to see their dashboard. And I might go to their discord. I might go to their telegram just to see, you know, at the very least go to their Twitter, see if they're being followed by anybody that uh, you follow. I mean, there's, these are just some of the things you can do to get more confidence that the project is a good one. But this is more research uh, from a fundamental standpoint. If you're just looking for coins that are good investments based on what smart money is doing, then you just stick to Nansen. Uh, but sometimes I will go on here and I'll maybe search the contract or what else can I look at? I guess that's about it. Anyway, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't love this wallet necessarily just because I can't confirm that, that there's good plays here that I've seen. I mean, I, some of them are recognizable, but it's just that I haven't played many of these, so I don't know for sure that he's making many good plays. But you could always go back, right? I mean, you could go back and look at another wallet and say, okay, you know, what does this person look like here? Yeah, these are actual uh, profit and loss. You know, this person made over a million with ETH, 758K with uh, Axie, AXS. I don't know what this is about. Sushi. Okay, so this person plays more 
you know, this person plays some more higher caps that are recognizable. Audiomatic, FXS, Uni, Yiffy, Sushi, okay. And they've been profitable on it. So that's, you know, that's a good sign. So when, one thing you can look at is when did he buy this? Where is it at? And I'm looking here, if this box that I'm moving right here, look where it says reach about halfway down, a little bit un under halfway down. This is just one way that you can look and see when they actually bought it. I don't see it on this screen. It shows up on the monthly, but not on that one. Well, it doesn't matter. We know that they bought more of it. So we're going to go to their transactions, you know, their specific transactions. Okay, there it is right there. Gaslight drop. So this looks, I wonder if this, okay, so this was an airdrop for this person. So this doesn't hold as much weight if it was an airdrop. You know, of course you want it to, to be an actual purchase. So let me go back to that other guy real quick. And I'm just going to see what his transaction showed. Yeah, his was an airdrop as well. So I'm not feeling, you know, I'm not really feeling this one as much anymore. But this is a good example of what it would look like if, I mean, I'm I'm just doing this without any prep. I'm, I don't edit any of my videos. You know, I'm showing you what I'm looking at, and uh, in real time. And this is. The morning of Friday, well, actually, it's afternoon now. It's lunchtime. So what what I want you to take away from that is this was a failed uh, coin for me. I, I, you know, I wouldn't be investing in it because I want it to be a good project, but I also want it to be uh, something that smart money seems interested in. And there is a quicker way, probably. I'm, I'm just going to show you a few different methods. Um but let me find one that looks like a good one first, and then we'll get into this dashboard portion here. So we'll go back to, um, I'll show you a different way you can look at it. Let's take off smart money token flow. Let's look at, could look at DEX token flow. Let's just see what that looks like real quick. So if you see outflow, here, here's the different way to do it. If you see outflow on this DEX second token flow, <clears throat> that means that people are taking the uh, tokens off the exchange, which with a DEX, I don't know how it calculates that. I mean, you're it's going straight to your wallet anyway. You know, a DEX is a decentralized exchange like, uh, you know, Uniswap or Kyber Swap or any of those. Uh, with a centralized exchange like Binance or uh, MEXC, you know, you can't actually keep those coins on the exchange if you want, which I wouldn't recommend that, you know, you need to have it on your own wallet. But anyway, just understand that this means that they purchased, you've got 47 times higher than the recent average. People have been buying UMA and that re reflects in the price, right? I mean, it's up two X over the last, what, 20, this may be a 24 hour feed. I'm not sure, but that's a 430 million, um, uh, fully diluted valuation, basically the market cap of the coin uh, based on how many coins or tokens are in circulation. Older coin, I mean, that's okay to play an older coin. It's not that big of a deal. They're just, sometimes they consolidate longer and they're harder to time, kind of like XRP. So let's just see if we can find a new one here. I mean, one thing you'll notice is on outflows, you know, the price has already gone up a lot on, you know, when you're looking at this one, here's a tour inflow. Okay. So inflow means people are selling. So you wouldn't want to touch this one. I'm just looking for one that, um, that has an outflow. That's also fairly new, you know, something within the last year or so inflow inflow. I wish I could search just by outflow. BTRST, 6X average, last 24 hours, that's a 2021. It's okay to play any, something that's less than, you know, the sweet spot for me, well, for a brand new coin, you want to find something maybe less than 10 million on market cap. But if you're looking for, you know, if you're wanting to widen your search, 
it's okay to look at stuff under 500 million. I mean, there's, there's still good opportunities for a lot of growth in a, in a token like that. Uh, inflow, inflow. I mean, you can see it takes a little while to, to find these. This one isn't bad. Nova. Okay. So I'm, I'm going into this one for Nova 26 million deployed July, 2023. I'm going into this without knowing anything about this coin. Mostly buys lately. Changes in smart money holders is one. So uh, there's somebody new that's been buying um, net withdrawals and deposits from exchanges. This means if it's a negative number, that means tokens have been coming off of the exchange. And smart money has been accumulating, though I don't know why it only says $54. That's weird. Yeah, so not a whole lot of people in this one. Um, but it could just be that it's new. Well, no, from, it's from July. Well, we'll just take a look at the smart money wallet just to see what they've got going on. It's not a lot of, uh, it's, it's not a good one. It's not a lot of um, activity. Let's just see if we can find a new one. And what I'll do is I'll add some more filters so you can see. So here's here's centralized exchange token flow. We'll add uh, smart money token flow back and fresh wallets flow. So now you're seeing four different filters and you're gonna get a, a wide range of uh, output here. So here's a new one. Uh, fresh wallets have accumulated APP five times more than the usual average. Deployed October, 2023, uh, 17 million and market cap, so we can take a look at that one. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's 52 new new holders. No, know why smart money's not showing more information than that, but we'll take a look at... Could take a look at either one of these, really. I don't really like that one. <clears throat> Let's see what this one looks like. Okay, so this person holds 30,000 worth of APP. It looks like they haven't done great lately. They've had some negative transactions. Yeah, I'm just not liking a lot of these. Um, and this is how it goes. I mean, it's just... Yeah, research is not not something that's easy to do, right? I mean, movie did a 10x after I found it because the chart looked good. And by the way, we can look at the chart for app and just see what somebody else might have been seeing. It's called Moon App. Okay, so it already made its move and it's re it's retracing. I don't like this, and I'll show you why. I'm going to show you exactly what I saw in movie. So here's where I entered movie. All I could see at the time was this. And what I did was it was obvious to me at least that, and I've got to do it like this first. It was obvious to me that there was a triangle forming. And admittedly, I got lucky. I mean, you know, I, I caught it at the right time. I think I actually had it down here. Something like that. Yeah, because I was connecting at the time at the top of this wick. And so as soon as I saw that this broke out and it was starting to retest this line, I went ahead and entered there. And then from that point, these triangles are very powerful, by the way. Actually, it went up about 15x, but I think I, I didn't get out right away. I ended up with a 10x on the profit. And right now it's doing okay. I mean, it's it's trying to find some support there, but definitely don't want to see it under, you know, 12 or 13 cents. But that's not really what I was trying to show here. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else I can find here. Shido, Outflow, 
deployed 2023. It's up 83% though. I don't like chasing coins. Uh, getting in on on things that are in the news, like Trump, you know, sometimes this is a good thing to get into. But you'd have to get in near the bottom. It's already up 3x. Let's see if we can find... Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing with Root here, because it's down. I mean, it's an older coin is the only problem, but uh, sometimes they work out. Let's just look at Root. It's kind of even buys and sells. Let's see if we can find a good smart money wallet here, because this is what it's all about. I mean, look how um, you know smart money holders and smart money balance has continued to increase here. Let's see, I'm I'm just going to look at the highest. Some of these are really big, um, like funds and stuff, and you can't can't look at all those. Here's one. I mean, you can look at them, but they don't give you as much information. Wow, this guy made a lot. Or this person made a lot on UFO. Okay, so pretty good mix. Been profitable. Has a decent amount of root here. It's their second holding, second highest. It's not the best wallet, but you, know, you can go ahead and look at it. Money flow coming out, maybe a little bit of a bullish div here. You know, could be fun and support. There is a lot of area here that could be considered support. But if it fails there, then it's coming all the way down to here, roughly. You'd, I think we probably are going to get some kind of relief bounce here, at least temporarily. And if that was to happen for this one, you'd get another shoulder out of it. If it was to stop here, you'd get something like that, maybe. And then who knows what happens after that. But at least you could take advantage of this next right shoulder, if that's all it did for you. But, you know, again, this is... And Bitcoin's doing the same thing. You know, momentum's trying to round out. So I would expect some kind of relief. It's just hard to tell when it's going to happen. Relief like that. And I'm talking about these momentum waves, these gray things. So root. Yeah, smart money has really been accumulating this one. Almost a million dollars in the last 24 hours. 11 new holders. So people are stepping in to buy the dip on this one for sure. Doesn't mean it's the very bottom, but, you know, uh, there's certainly people stepping in to buy it. So this is a pretty good example, actually. All right, so here's another way. And I'm going to show you a really good smart wallet uh, here in a bit that you can track if you want to, if you use this. And remember, on Nansen, it does cost money to get most of these features, although they do have a free product as well. Um, I think it's like, it's a little bit over $100. I don't remember exactly what, 100 per month. So, so notice how Root is on this first page of the smart money token inflow. Usually when you see a coin on this first page, it's already done its move. But since everything's dipping, it's possible that, th that these are some of the stronger ones that could have a bigger move coming out of the dip. And yeah, Shib's on there. But usually what I would do is I'd at least go to the third page. Well, Reach is right there on the second page. Topia is a good project, it seems like, by the way. I haven't really um, studied it enough, but I think it could be a big one. I think it's in the gaming space. Here's Ave. Remember, DeFi has been beat down pretty hard. What else? 
so this is the third page. I'm just trying to find something I haven't seen before. I think this is one I've talked about before. Fidium. What is TKST? That may be one to look at. Let's see. And I realize these are very small numbers as far as 24-hour inflow, but this is just smart money that we're looking at. So sometimes you can catch these before, you know, even if it's just a little bit of money coming in, you can catch these before they move. But it takes a lot of study, and I mean, you may have to click through every one of these. This may be an interesting one, karate. 19 new holders, okay. And usually this is what I would do in this case, is I would look, oh, this is a person that I already have uh, bookmarked, by the way. So we'll look at this guy. I had labeled that he's one of the best. So high activity, wallet to watch. Looks like they held Beam and CRV at one time. You can put these little bookmarks. Yeah, they hold a lot of the popular ones there. like they sold some MXH. We talked about that one at one time. Sold some movie. Looks like mostly they've been going to wrapped ETH, selling off some of their positions. So that's another way you can use it. If you see smart money starting to take a lot of profit on multiple coins that they have, then that tells you, you know, it could be time to to go to stables, at least for a little bit. That's interesting. They've been accumulating hex two hours ago. This person's very um, active, by the way. Anytime you see the Uniswap um, wording over here and then the name of the wallet here, that means they're these tokens are being transferred to this person's wallet. So basically they're buying it. But if you see it the opposite, like right here, where the wallet's on the left and then Uniswap or whatever exchange they're using is on the right, then that means they're selling. So they sold something to wrapped ETH. You know, they just went to stables. Now, anytime they sell doesn't mean that they're going to stables because they think the market's going to dip more. Sometimes they're just taking profit on whatever coin they bought before. But if you see a lot of it, then you know maybe they're expecting a bigger dip. Or they're just protecting themselves just in case there is one. Doesn't mean they'll always be right. But yeah, they, they got some hex here. They got some karate here. So karate, okay. Uh, this karate one's actually interesting. Let's just look at it. Oh, it's been going up a lot though. Hmm. I mean, it's... It, it's not to say that it's just going to roll over here. It could keep going for sure. But money flow has peaked or close to peaked. And momentum could be coming down here. But usually it takes these things a while to roll over. It's just, I don't know that I'd be looking at this. I just wonder, though, could it take off all of a sudden? I mean, this is a pretty good candle. It's got a green candle right here that's engulfing these other wicks. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's up almost 10x. I mean, it's just, to me, it's scary to be buying things like this. And typically, this is a... This is a bearish formation, even though it's bullish. Especially, you know, if you get a break, like a four-hour candle below this line, this trend line, then it's definitely coming down. But the reason why I say it's bearish overall, if you haven't bought way down here, is because, well, number one, you're near the all-time high, which really I need to look at another chart to make sure on that. But it is a fairly new coin, yeah. I guess the thing that concerns me, though, is anytime you see these real aggressive moves, 
like this where it just doesn't have much of a pullback it ends up being a bearish uh, move eventually you know once it reaches that little peak wherever it's going to peak out at it's hard to explain it's just a pattern that plays out a lot like you get this really tight straight up move and then it breaks down about 50 percent, and then maybe continues again it's scary buying things at the top like this though sometimes you can look at the uh the wrapped ether pair and you might get more information as far as it being uh, an older coin on there that's not the right one, is it? You got to be careful. I mean, that, that's why you need to look it up sometimes and, and check the contract. Make sure you got the right one. Anyway, it doesn't look like there's any more information. It is, you know, it did start down here at the bottom and came down a little bit more than took off. But notice how it's constricting uh, here. You know, e either it's just going to blast off or it's going to roll over here. And it would have to be a very powerful move if it was going to continue. You know, kind of like a blow off top move. So to me, it's just not worth getting into this one right now. I think that's about it as far as showing you how, you know, what my thought process is. I can show you also some of my saved wallets here. Where would I find that? Watch list. Yeah, let me just go through a few of these. This person at one time held Arbitrum, which I still hold it. They took some profit on it recently, but they still hold 101,000 worth. We can just look at some of their transactions. Let's see. So they sold some Arb four minutes ago. They sold some render, flip. Looks like mostly they're going to stable coins, maybe. Yeah, you can see here where they're accumulating a lot of wrapped ether. You know, they're wanting to buy something else, maybe, or, you know, mostly they've just been distributing on the market. They've been selling off today. Sometimes that's selling the bottom, sometimes it's not. Let's see where Bitcoin is. Yeah, Bitcoin did bounce a little bit off of there. So there, there's definitely buyers here. Doesn't mean it's going to hold, but so far it is. All right, let's look at somebody else that has an interesting wallet. This person I have is a whale. 1.5 million wallet. There's some, yeah, there's some recognizable coins here. See what they've been up to. It looks like they're a movie holder. Anytime you see somebody with a lot of BSB, uh, BSSB from Multibit especially, that means they're getting a reward of BSSB. Here's another person that's been buying that Moon app. Hmm. What did we look at on that? What did the chart look like on it? Oh, that's right. It had a massive move. I would say on this one, you know, for me personally, I would wait to see how it played out, you know, because it, I bet what it does is it kind of does something like that before it's ready to move up. Mostly like a bull flag or a pennant or something. We'll just have to see how it plays out. But, you know, those, it, it does happen a lot where those pump up real hard at inception and then they just kind of go down for a little bit. Yeah, this person's in mostly stables currently. What is this? C-A-H. Oh, that's already made too much of a move. If I see something like this where it's almost gone up 2x, I usually don't mess with it. Yeah, it looks like they were selling it anyway. I don't know, though. That, that app, that APP moon app one, maybe something to look into for the future anyway. What else? Okay, this I had a note here that this person usually buys the dip. 
Let's see what they've got going on now. I don't know what this is. There's a coin here called BTC, but it's not Bitcoin, obviously. I've seen a couple of people buying it lately. Maybe this is one to look at. Yeah, people have been accumulating this one. Hmm. It's not much, though. There's barely any money in this thing. I don't know what this is, but there's... They're not buying much of it. Well, here's a person that bought 12,000. What could we look at on this? Um, I don't know how to look this up. Because if you type in BTC, I guess one way you could do it is this. BTC coin. I don't know, something like this is going to be hard to find because of Bitcoin, you know? All right, let's jump to another. See if I can find you another one. This was, I've got Kung Fu Grip on this person. I, I put that as a, uh, what do you call it? Just like a keyword on them because it seems like they hold on to their coins. They don't sell them very often. Yeah, it looks like they're still doing it. They have bought one called PUBLX recently. Looks like they bought Woj. Oh, this is 10 days ago and five days ago. Okay. PUBLX. Well, that's a really old coin. I don't want to mess with that. Who else we want to look at? Here's a real popular one. Where is he at? Roger Lim. I've showed y'all this one before. He was one of the ones that I felt confident about, you know, buying movie because he was buying it. Let's see what he's buying now. AMMX. Um, oh, I think this was a reward maybe from Multibit. So I'm, I'm going to skip that one. TKST, he was selling... Yeah, not a lot going on with his wallet right now. Who else? You can see well, one thing to notice is, where was Roger Lim here? One thing to notice is uh, it shows the chains. Yeah, this person, Roger Lim, he buys a different, a lot of different coins on different chains. Whereas this person here just buys on Ethereum chain. So, you know, these are people that buy more altcoins and make transactions on, um, you know, DEXs instead of just central exchange, like some people. Here's a really big wallet, or it was at one time. Now it's 1.4 million. Let's see. They played Blur. Okay. So two days ago, let's see what they got going on. Yeah, mostly they've just been going to ETH. Yeah, they're they're mostly in ETH currently. <clears throat> Trying to find, I mean, the problem right now is, you know, price action has been going down a little bit or going sideways. So there's not a whole lot of people um, you know, getting into things. They're mostly just kind of holding on to what they have. C98. I know that's an old coin. That's weird. He sold. 
Oh, that was a long time ago. That was 23 days ago. Never mind. Let's see this one. This is an ARB holder. Or is this the one I already looked at? <laughs> It looks like they sold some ARB, they sold some more there, sold some more there. So <clears throat> today, mostly what I'm seeing is people distributing into the market. You know, they're selling their coins. Yeah, it looks like he's just, of course, this is a, a big account, I think. Yeah, it's a $2 million account. And it's called Ars Global, so it could be like it's it's a group. It's maybe not an individual. This is an individual. These right here. Let's see if we can find a high activity individual wallet. When I started getting Mubi, I, I tried to find other Mubi wallets, you know, to see what they were doing, because that's a good way to do it: is to find what other people are doing, what other smart money's doing. And just mimic them, you know, see what they're playing. They made a lot of money off a of movie there, but they still hold a lot as well. Oh, here was a really good play, Troll. I think this thing went up like 10x within a couple of days, but it was dormant forever. I mean, it just sat down at the bottom forever. So it's hard to time these things. But you could have caught this one. And... and Thinking about that, let me let me show you one more uh, method. So if you go right here and you search, like let's just say I showed this preview in the last video that I did. Let's just say you want to look at the last 30 days and you want to look at only new tokens because you want to get in at the bottom floor. You know, you want to try to get in before it moves a lot. Well, here is that MMX that I saw a second ago. It's only up 50%. Uh, smart money outflow, smart money inflow. Fresh wallet inflow is pretty important. So there's been almost a million dollars worth of fresh wallets accumulating this one. MXH is up there. That was one we talked about not long ago. See, I, th there's fresh wallet money inflow, but there's... This is the smart money. So this is not smart money, although it could include some smart money, but this is definitely the smart money category here. You wanna see where, um, I think that's right. Yeah, smart money inflow. So you've actually got people buying these coins, you know, that are smart money wallets. I think I've seen Omni on there before, but it's still somewhat new. So is this AI. seen no no smart money here so even though people are accumulating there's really been no smart money in these coins currently so ammx may be one to look at but i'm worried that it could be a reward ammx I mean, sometimes just look at the chart might be the quickest way. Wow, that one rejected hard. That's weird. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't like that. That's, I mean, it could be a good buying opportunity, but I sure don't like, unless it was just somebody that bought a ton and didn't mean to. And then it hit a bunch of these uh, sell, sell orders and then cascaded down. That's possible that that happened. It's also possible that it was some kind of reward that was released or some kind of funds were unlocked and somebody sold a bunch. See what this AI, I don't know what this one's called though. Yeah, I really don't know what this one's called. So it's hard for me to look that one up. There's a lot of coins with AI in the name. 
then another thing you could do is just leave it on this 384 days. You know, look at the last year. You don't have to look just at the last 14 days or whatever. New tokens. And it's really all the same ones, isn't it? Hmm. We could look at what MXH is doing. <clears throat> yeah, it's just going sideways mostly. Not really good examples here, but you, at least you're seeing how to find it. Name buddy. Hmm, there's no chart on this one. I'm just going through a couple of these, see if there's any good looking charts. Yeah, I don't really like that one. You really want to find like a like a triangle formation if you can. That one's not coming up. Look at the last seven day. <clears throat> this may be another way to look at it. XD. That's a new one. ZKB. XD, ZKB. Oh, there's type. That's not bad. I mean, it could come down a little bit more. I think this one still needs to come down some or go sideways. What was the other one I said? There's one Sona. Sona dual ZKB. It's not a bad one. What does momentum say though? I could find some support from all this over here. It's not a bad one to look into, so not a network. I'm not gonna get into studying it, but you know, you may want to look into Sona there. DKB. You know, this one's come down a lot, so it's not a bad one to look at either. Looks like it's brand new though. CKB coin. DK cross chain bridge. This is kind of what movie is. It's a it's a cross chain bridge. I don't even think it's, it doesn't have its chart on here yet. Oh, it's a BNB. Usually I don't like messing with BNB uh, smart chain. XD, that was what I was going to look at. X Doge, is that the? Wow, what happened to that one? X Doge. Maybe it's XD token. So this is part of the problem. You got to make sure you have the right token. I don't know. Neither one of those charts are very interesting. 888, what is this? Lucky 8 token. Looks like a pancake swap BNB. I don't know. That definitely doesn't look good. Oh, maybe this is it. I don't know. This is not one I'd be playing anyway, because I mean, it could come all the way up to here, possibly, but it's just too extended for me, especially where the money flow is. I don't know that this is the correct one, though. And again, it's on BNB chain, and I don't like messing with that. Anyway, 
<clears throat> hopefully that helped out uh, on how to use this. I mean, I, of course, I didn't go over everything. Um, if you want to find this area once you're in Nansen, just go to, which one is it? I set this up on my dashboard, but you can go to um, the token paradise. Yeah. And then click on token flow and then hit new tokens there. Anyway, there's a lot more information here. There's a lot of different other things you can use, like on-chain metrics, number of holders, change, volume, stuff like that. Um, but you really have to just go through it yourself and find the things that that work for you, put it on your dashboard, and then every day you can look at it. Here's my dashboard that we were looking at. This is real powerful too, though. You know, like We found that karate coin on there. It, it's just... It's hard to find a good one right now just because there's so very few that are actually going up, you know, because Bitcoin is struggling. But anyway, there's a few more if you want to look them up. Pause it and go back and, you know, look at the ones that I pulled up there. There's this Boba. Yeah, Boba might be one to look at as well. Oh, it's on Coinbase. It's an older coin. It may be a slow mover. Okay, well, I'm going to end it there. Uh, again, well, Bitcoin's actually pushing back up. Maybe we are getting that bounce. It's got to get back above 41.5. You know, there, there is some resistance here. And then it definitely has to get back above uh, 40, whatever we said, 43-ish. There's a, there's a lot of resistance going back up, basically. I mean, this this doesn't say we're bouncing. Absolutely, you know, it's not it's not giving us a, enough information just yet. But we do have to hold these levels here around forty point two. Otherwise, we come down here to uh, thirty eight five or so. Okay. Well, y'all, let me know uh, in in the comments if there's something different you want to see, or if maybe I didn't explain it enough. I'm happy to go back over it. I'm just here to help, you know, I just want to help people. Um, but yeah, just let me know what else I can do to, to help you all out. Okay. Y'all have a good weekend.